put one of your questions, not all six. <laughs> Someone who's uh, from a bit outside the Labour Party traditionally, I've seen a lot of quite interesting developments with the Manchester Credit Union, Salford Credit Union, Manchester Energy Hall, um, Manchester Building Society. I'm wondering whether there are potential for strategic partnerships, for instance, like um, encouraging the hospitals to buy from the Manchester Energy Hall. If we're setting up our own energy company, can it provide? energy, you know, at a cheaper rate for our, um, our, our local services and whether, yeah, those can be tied in because I've heard a lot of holistic stuff but we've got uh, holistic organisations that can provide the economic and energy support and food support even. So yeah, I wondered if you had any thoughts on that. Let's have Tony first. Yeah, I mean, you, let me pick up obviously on the, the, the Greater Manchester Energy energy because you're quite right to to single this out. We, we want, it's already been done in some other areas, Nottingham, uh, Bristol are already ahead of us in this, but we are in the process of, of bringing forward a Greater Manchester Energy Company. That can be part of a process. And I want it actually, the, the, the original plan was to, to see this as being um, something to, to provide uh, lower cost energy for our industries and services, and that's a worthy ambition. However, I think we ought to be looking at it more in terms of, of, of fuel poverty about making sure that we're giving the proper capacity for, for people who, where, where um, energy costs become a disproportionate part of, of their, their family income. So the, the targeting will be around there. Now, whether we can play in um, our public institutions into that in the short term, uh, because we can't overload what, what is a new structure, what we can do, though, is we can use the, the combined purchasing power across our, our systems to begin to, to transform the way we pay and the way we're treated by the, by the energy the, the energy monopolies that, that we've got in, in this country, that's important. But in terms of new ideas, actually, Andy, I'm not sure I do totally agree with you in having a national, uh, a, a nationalised social care system. I think there's a good argument around cooperative systems and looking at uh, radically different ways of, of, of doing this. What, but, you know, if you, if you look um, across the, 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 different, the different areas, um, maybe we are you know, going to, to want to need to look at different sources of, 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 um, of financing for, for things like our cooperative system, and that's actually um, where we can have a very different, uh, a different view of the world, where people can buy um, th their own way into that cooperative, so almost an insurance policy, a bit like the NHS, but at local level, um, by being a member of a cooperative, if you need that social care at that point in your life, it will be there for you. If you're lucky and don't need it, then, um, then you've, you've contributed, but that's like taxation. It's, it's a fair and sensible way of doing things. So we've got to explore radical new ways of delivering different, different systems, and, uh, um, and certainly every one of them is worth looking at. Andy. Okay. Let me just, uh, just pick up on a point Tony made there, just to explain when Tony says about nationalised care, social care. I'm not saying all of it, but I want to tell me why I want some social care in the NHS. Because you've got to give the NHS control over the whole patient journey. If you go to any hospital in Greater Manchester today, you will see the terrible, terrible sight of just rows and rows of very frail, very elderly, elderly people trapped in hospital beds. And the reason is the hospital is not in control of the paperwork that gets that person back to a secure environment back at home. If they had social care within their organisation, and you build hospital organisations into integrated care organisations, they then control the journey that goes from home to hospital and back again and you optimise that patient journey. And that is why nationalised social care, in my view, uh, makes sense. However, there are other services that quite properly should sit outside. And, and I would say you need to have a different relationship with the voluntary sector or the cooperative sector. And this is where an issue needs to be kind of resolved. As Shadow Health Secretary, I said, I, if I came in as Health Secretary after 2015, I was going to designate the voluntary sector differently to the for-profit sector. Organisations that are working for the common good, that are not for profit, that are working to benefit people and involve people in volunteering, improve health, should be given a different status in my view uh, under the, the way the health service works. So that means five or ten year contracts with them long-term stability so they can become part of the team, a trusted part of that single team around people providing a range of services, uh, befriending, all kinds of support. 
but it might also apply to some of the things that you're, uh, that you're uh, touching on as well, a, a different relationship uh, between the two. And it brings me just to a kind of quick final point. The question is, I said at the beginning, you know, how much freedom has the mayor truly got from Tory uh, health policy? Uh, and the truth is, I don't think it's got enough, actually. But I was just reading, I've been sitting, talking to you, the, the, the quote on the back wall there, respect the laws of the state, but let your first loyalty be to, be God's, to, be to God's purposes. I'd substitute labour for God there and say, okay, first words, be to labour's purpose. And if you, fell, if you feel impelled by strong conviction to break the law, search your conscience deeply. Well, I would have a conviction, if not break, certainly to bend the law. I would constantly be shouting up on the national stage, you gave us devolution, but you're trying to give us this market. We're not having it. I want a change. I want to strike a different deal with our voluntary sector, our cooperative sector. I want to get rid of the rules of the market. I want to bring social care into the NHS and you need also to be running the NHS here but having that argument and saying to the country look Labour's got a vision for a different way of running the health service here that's not the Tory way uh, give us the power to do it let us run the health service in the way that we want and that is something I would certainly be doing every single day as your mayor. Ivan. Yeah let me address the question first and then I can uh, go a bit broader because other people have. Um, I think procurement is a massive opportunity. We have a, a massive public, the, the mayoral role gives us the opportunity to bring the public sector together in a way that we haven't been able to do before. And I think the use of procurement to achieve a more green, I mean I'm not carbon free by 2050, uh, for example, to achieve some of those green objectives should not be a sideshow, a silo issue, a marginal issue. It should be at the heart of the way we see this new role, this new power to bring that procurement together. So I think that that is very, very important. I think apprenticeships for young people is another example. I think giving working class kids access to internships and work experience, because they're locked out of those opportunities off within this massive health and social care system, is something else that we ought to be uh, doing. So I think the use of government. Can I just say something about the community and voluntary sector? I spent my whole life in it. It's like living, to, it's like listening to a different union. These organisations are being slashed and burned all over Greater Manchester. We talk about prevention and early intervention. The voluntary sector is always the first to go when, uh, when in-house provision has got a choice. And, and part of the problem is commissioning has gone wrong. These commissioners sit there and they only want to commission with these big global bodies, not the small grassroots community-based organisations that make a transformational difference. And the only way around that is A, to change the culture around commissioning, but also to carve out a distinct pot of money which says that money has to be used solely for grassroots, community-based, voluntary organisations that often are achieving outcomes that, frankly, some of these larger organisations never have a chance of achieving. But I do think sometimes this conversation feels as though it's not the real world that my constituents live in or my voluntary sector friends live in or my stepmom who's using mental health services at the moment where I hear about all these improvements that are taking place. It's just not the, rea it's not the reality. And so... The gap between rhetoric and reality has got to be closed. And I can say that as a minister. Because when I was a government minister, that was what I pro focused on every single day. The fact is that people used to spell, this is what's happening, that's what's happening, these wonderful policies, these wonderful resources. And I used to go home and I used to people working on the front line of the health and social care system. <coughs> and people using the system used to say, Ivan, that's not the system we work in. That's not the system that we use. And I go to go back on that Monday morning and say, I care about delivery and implementation. The civil servant said to me, politicians don't usually care about that minister. But it's the only thing that matters, delivery and implementation. They're all these high ideals. And can I deal with these questions of big ideas? Andy, you were very generous to me in saying that when you had all that aggro, because you had the audacity to spend a week on the front line of the health service, you got, yeah, you got a load of criticism from Colin, who said, you know, why was he doing it, what was his agenda? And I supported him, yeah. But at that time... I was sat in the next door office to Andy, and he knows that I produced the first ever vision for the integration of health and social care in this country. He knows that. And he privatised NH NHS logistics at the same time. But the point I'm making to you is that is fact, okay? That is fact. We need to be honest with people about legacies and, and record here. And you know what? You know who screwed the notion of integration and health and so The acute end of the NHS system. I didn't at first think, I thought they didn't get it, what integration really meant. I thought they didn't get it. And then I realised they were subverting it every single day. Every day I said to them, we need to bring together acute primary care, 
social care, housing, transport, all of the range of housing, all of the range of community services. If we're going to move to a truly preventative early intervention system, it was constantly the acute end of the NHS that were doing it, and it was about power and budgets for them. It wasn't about people. And you know what? It's still happening in Greater Manchester Town. Just because they're all sat around the tables, smiling at each other, it's still those empires are still getting in the way. And that's why political leadership that gets the link between what happens there and what happens there is so crucially important. Partnership is an overused word. How many times have people here sat around partnership boards and then questioned to themselves, what did the partnership achieve on the ground? Partnership is the mutual suppression of mutual loathing in the pursuit of government money. You've all heard that expression. <laughs> partnership for a purpose, absolutely. But creating boards and creating structures and talking about... And, and the final point I want to make is this. So what Andy has said, and it's a perfectly reasonable position, is he's going to take social care out of local government and put it into the NHS. That is the policy, and people in Greater Manchester who are voting in this, ele in this election need to know that that is what your policy is, moving social care into the NHS. Perfectly respectable. How is it going to be funded? It's the, the level of pressure on the NHS at the moment, and the, level of, uh, the, the slashing of early of social care funding, you are going to put the, the social care into the NHS. We're going to nationalise it. We can't nationalise anything from Greater Manchester, can we? We, we? we can create a new system that localises health and social care in every neighbourhood and every community so individual patients and their families get that tailored, customised support that we all want them to have. But you can't nationalise uh, health and social care uh, uh, from Greater Manchester. That's just, and can I say this? The status. To get a the, the, the status. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, you, you've had lots of opportunities. It's it's like the speech, but, 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 but the status of care workers, the level of pay that they get, yeah. the people who work with the most vulnerable in our communities on dementia, on dignity of old it's shocking, absolutely scandalous. And what I've said I would do, the first thing I'd do, I would set up a commission to analyse the gap between if we were to pay those people properly. How much would it cost? What's the gap between that and the amount of money that we're actually getting from this government? And then I would launch a campaign to say, if you want your elderly mum or elderly dad to be treated with dignity, we cannot pay the people who look after them, the peanuts that we pay them at the moment. If you shift it to the health service, you're not going to get any extra money to pay them better. They're not going to have a better status. They're not going to be on better pay as a consequence of shifting them from local authority employment into NHS employment because there isn't the budget to enable you uh, to do that.